In the name of God, who makes a way where there is no way. Amen. Amen. Thank you. looking out and seeing you people. <laughs> There's so much I want to say to you today, and there will be plenty of time to share in celebration and to say our goodbyes. But today I simply want to say thank you. I want to thank you for your prayers, for your support, for your love, for your words of encouragement, for your chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I want to thank you for your love and support of me, for your love and support of Paul and Ardani. We worship a God who finds a way where there is no way. Always. There were a couple of hours yesterday <laughs> where God was showing that to be true. I had some sacred, blessed voices letting me know that there was a way if I remain steadfast. In our gospel this morning, there's this incredible story of this healing of the man at the pool of Bethsaida. I want to give you a little background. It's important to know about what was going on there and why this gospel story is important for me and for us. See, this pool when uh, we went on uh, our pilgrimage to the Holy Land a few years back, we had the incredible blessing of standing at the pool, this pool, and just feeling the centuries upon centuries of spirits of people who have come to that place both before and after Jesus uh, had this interaction seeking healing and hope. And what they believed, you know, we just sang that uh, hymn, Wade in the Water, God's Gonna Trouble the Water. Because what people believed is as they sat around that pool seeking healing, they would watch the surface of the pool that was still. And the minute there was a rippling in the pool, they believed that the first one in would receive healing. And so people would spend an incredible amount of time aching and longing for God's presence in their lives, waiting to watch the water get troubled. So we have this man who's been there for 38 years, right? Not quite 54, but 38, <laughs> close enough. And he's sitting there day after day after day, watching faithfully for the sign that he has been taught to look out for, a rippling of the water. And then every time he sees the rippling of the water, somebody else gets in the water before him and receives the healing. When he does make it to the edge of the pool and has the potential of being the first one in, there's no one to lower him into the pool. So day after day after day, he watches and waits, watches and waits for the sign he told was told would be a bring him a sign of God's presence and healing balm in his life. So then Jesus enters the scene and has that line, which I love, looks at a man clearly in need of healing, been waiting there for 38 years, and says to him, do you want to be made well? I can think of all sorts of responses that man could have made to Jesus. 
what do you think I'm doing here? I think the power of God in this story, and I think what Jesus says to him, is stop waiting for what you've been told it will look like when God comes into your life. Stop waiting for what it is other people told you it would be like when God found a way into your heart and called you into what it is God is calling you into next. You want to be made well, Jesus says to that man, get up, take your mat, let's go. A lot of things are needed to make this story work. The man needed to see Jesus, needed to be looking. The man needed to hear Jesus' words and understand them to be from God. And then the man needed to get up and take his mat and go, letting go of everything he had been taught to believe it would look like when his time came. He needed to trust and he needed to go. We are, all of us, that man at the pool at Bethsaida. We are, all of us, sitting and waiting and aching for all of those signs we have been taught it will look like when God's reign for this world is made known. I was taught growing up in the church that if you were ever going to be bishop <laughs> you'd know it ahead of time because <laughs> there would be a rippling in the water and so i thought i was being faithful and i was watching the pool waiting for it to ripple then wondering what the rippling would mean how to interpret it what to do how to get there who will help me in? And what we know happened yesterday is that God said to the people of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut and to me all at once, get up, take your mat, let's go. I think God is saying the same thing to you all here. And I know that today is a day of many emotions. <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay to be happy and sad. That's what it means to live in Holy Saturday, which you all know by now. And if you didn't know before last week with the meet and greets, you certainly know now. Holy Saturday is my favorite day in the church year. It's the day after Good Friday when the worst that we could have imagined has happened. And it's the day before the empty tomb. When those first followers of Jesus were wondering, what happens now? We weren't ready for this. This isn't what we were expecting, how it would go. These are not the signs we were told to watch out for. And we have the benefit that if this is not our first Holy Saturday, we know that resurrection happens. We know that new life happens. We know that that empty tomb is not empty, but full of possibility. We don't have to stay in Good Friday as a community. I ask us not to rush to Easter. It's okay to sit for a while in Holy Saturday, waiting, wondering, thinking together with God, what will new life look like here in this place? And as I said to the eight o'clock community, I'll say to you, I fully anticipate ter being terribly jealous of what it is you are all going to be able to do in the days and years after I leave. You're going to be just fine. Know that. But do me a favor in this Holy Saturday. Do God a favor in this moment in our life as a community. 
Let's take our eyes off the pool. Let's look away and not wait for the water to ripple to let us know that God is with us, that God is calling us to something new. Let us hear Jesus walk by us. Invite us to be made well. Invite us to follow. Take up our mats. And my dear, dear friends, let's go. Amen.